Hello, everyone. Welcome to Concordia University's fourth space, and thank you so much for joining us for today's event, the 15th annual Graduate Research Exposition of JMS, JMSB's Doctoral and Masters of Science programs. Now, to help situate you, we are streaming to YouTube live from fourth space, and here we are located on unceded indigenous lands in Chichague, Montreal. Here at Fourth Space, we work with our university community to help mobilize knowledge, co-creating daily activities that examine research questions, projects, things in development across the university. Now, just so you know, we're running this event as a live stream meeting, so we welcome any comments, questions in the chat, those of you in the space. Uh, if you have questions, you, we'll get a microphone to you for that. But with that, it is now my pleasure to hand it over to Professor in the Department of Management, Linda Dyer. Linda. Thank you so much, thank you. And I want to welcome everyone to our AGRE, Annual Graduate Research Exposition. It's our 15th edition, and we are looking forward to a stimulating and enjoyable time. So what's the goal of this event? The goal is to present recent and ongoing research to our broader community, our business community, our academic community. We also have a goal of helping our graduate students communicate in language that is clear, that is relevant, and that is actionable. And so this conversation between our students and the practitioners who are coming in to evaluate the presentations is really important to us. It's an important learning experience. Um, all of our disciplines, all of the business disciplines are represented here today. And we do hope that you have a stimulating and enjoyable time. And um, whether you are here in the room with us, whether you are looking at this on your screen because the um, event is being live streamed, we just hope that you have a really interesting and uh, useful time. So um, one of the things about being in this site is the live stream, that now we can do it this way. And we know that there are alumni, we know that there are people who are, their family members are in other countries, we know that there are people all over the place who can now look at this part of the event. In fact, one of my colleagues is in class right now and she said that she's going to be streaming it to her class, um, the, what's about to happen. And what is about to happen? These are the elevator pitches. Um, the students will come out one at a time. In 30 seconds, they're going to give you a little bite of what their poster is all about. And um, once we've done all 25 students, we will then start showing the posters so that you can mingle, you can ask them questions, you can chat about them. You can actually vote for your favorite poster so you can get a ballot at the front and so all of that is in store for us, and we hope that you have a wonderful and stimulating time. So I'm going to briefly announce each student, and they're all waiting back there, anxious to share with you their very interesting research ideas. And so, with no further ado, I start with George. Thank you, Linda. It's a pleasure to be here. Have you ever wondered how big decisions get made around innovation? I certainly have, and a lot of these decisions, unfortunately, are not successful. Canada ranks 11 out of 12 in a recent global study on overall innovation. What I propose to do is take a look at boards of directors from an enthrographic perspective, study how decisions are made, and take this learning and spread it so everybody can benefit from it. If you'd like to learn more, I'd love to talk to you. I'll be over at my poster a couple times today. Come and see me. Thank you. Thanks, George. Now we move on to Sarah. Hello, everyone. Have you ever wondered why certain attempts at body diversity from various brands are better received by the public than others? For example, Dove and Victoria's Secret have both used plus size models in their advertisements, but one has faced a lot more backlash than the other. In my research, I look at how a spokesperson's body type in a sponsored social media post 
um, will affect the way people evaluate the post, the product, and the brand. I find that the thin model actually produces more positive attitudes towards the post than the plus size model, but I find an unexpected factor that may actually negate these results. I look forward to telling you more about it when you come see my poster. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. And now we have Abby. I don't even know how I got to this e-commerce tool. I think it was in a YouTube video or something. This quote from a black entrepreneur in my study, a young entrepreneur, um, illustrates a strategy of digital bricolage where you take a variety of tools from a variety of sources and you combine them as needed. Um, as situations arise. This strategy is really helpful in low resource and dynamic environments and it can be supported. Digital bricolage has the potential to bridge digital divide at the transformative access level. I'd love to share some more when you come see my poster. Thank you, Abby. And now Sonia will join us. Are you dreaming of a greener future with zero carbon emissions by 2050? If so, then you'll want to check out my carbon pricing predictive model. Combining AI-driven solutions with innovative data pre-processing methods, this model will help shape uh, carbon pricing policies and uh, it will help businesses um, it will help businesses uh, optimize uh, investments and reduce emissions. So come check out my poster for more details. Thank you. Thank you. And next we will have Dania. The concept of using drawings to illustrate stories dates back to prehistoric times. These visual narratives have evolved into many different forms, with one of them being comic books. Despite being part of pop culture and generating billions of dollars every year, <clears throat> academic research and marketing has understudied this unique storytelling method. Curious to discover how individuals experience comics and how these powerful mediums engage with them? Tune in and find out. Thank you. Thanks, Dania. Next up, Gideon. Good afternoon. Every time we use digital technologies, we find ourselves within a platform ecosystem, benefiting from both complementary innovation and platform infrastructure. The more complementers are free to innovate, the more value we gain as users. I'm interested in measuring this level of freedom in platform ecosystems, and I welcome you to collaborate with me. My name is Gideon, and I thank you for your audience. Um, Tanmaya, you're up next. Hi, everyone. Would seeing an adorable pet promote a vacuum on social media influence your decision to purchase it? In the ever-evolving landscape of influencer marketing, my research hones in on a delightful phenomenon, pet influencers. By comparing different types of pet influencers, sorry, influencers, I'm gathering crucial insights on for marketers navigating the digital realm. Join me as man's best friend becomes a marketer's best asset, one adorable post at a time. Thank you. And next, we have Rajesh. If you look at the last four or five years, cyber attacks have, on a handful of months, I think cyber attacks have not been on the spotlight. In this digital age, when we are reliant on, saying reliant on digital systems is an understatement. Rather than focusing on how vulnerable our data is, which it is, I want to focus on what is the cost of vulnerability. So come by my poster, we can talk about what are the factors that actually talks about how vulnerable or resilient a firm is. Thank you. And next we have Akshor.
Hi everyone. How would you react if you saw an advertisement that asks you not to buy your product or to reduce consumption to save the environment while at the same time promoting a brand? Well, that's exactly what I'm trying to find out. Using a series of three experiments, I'm studying whether green demarketing stands true, true to its claims and also understanding its underlying mechanism. My study aims to align marketing with the degrowth and the circular economic concepts. Come by my poster to find out more. Thank you. And we have Yala. Hello, everyone. Have you ever wondered if patients love their prescription drugs? And if so, why? Until now, this question has gone unexplored in the marketing literature, despite the potential of the brand love holding great potential in increasing patient adherence. Now, through a mix of social listening tools and survey machines, my research revealed that pharmaceutical brand love exists, and it's characterized by patient's tolerability, positive word of mouth, and uh, increased trust and efficacy, all translating to an overall enhancement in patient journeys and treatment compliance. Thank you. Next up, Shio. Hi, my name is Sho. Uh, you probably noticed this. Today, to embrace body positivity, uh, brand, ma brand managers are showcasing model body size, but showcasing models with different body size range from thin or muscular to large. But here's the million dollar question. Does filtering a large sized model really make a brand more likable? Well, our research reveals that, reveals a surprising twist. Uh, it all depends on the gender of your audience. Uh, curious to know more? Swim by at number 11, and we can uncover how to delight your customers with uh, inclusive advertising. Thank you. Thank you. And I see Swananya. Hi everyone, do you know that fashion industry is a major environmental polluter contributing to 8 to 10 percent of greenhouse emissions and posing serious threats to consumers? But eco friendly fashion brands can make changes by reducing the environmental pollution up to 90 percent by using sustainable materials. But the problem is people do not trust those brands because of the fake claims from other unsustainable brands. In I will show how using your apples we can increase consumer trust and how consumers' involvement can impact their belief. So curious, so come and take my poster. Thank you. Next we have Muhammad. So for a long time, you used to believe we need to be powerful, we need to be resourceful to be able to innovate. But digital platforms show us uh, we only need uh, access to internet and probably a smartphone to be able to innovate. But in the era of generative AI, we don't even need to be human to innovate. So I'm exploring how uh, you can come to my poster and we can discuss about it. Cynthia, you're on. Hello, everyone. So companies often say employees are our greatest assets. But how do we know it's true? Investors are now pressuring companies to disclose how they manage and invest in their employees. Board of directors are also reshaping and appointing HR experts. It started out as an evolution, now almost becoming a revolution. Can these new directors push for more transparency and commitment towards employees? Drop by my poster to discuss it further. Thank you. Next, we have Poe. Hi there. Every time that a company wants to employ some new people, they start interviewing a lot of people to make sure that they have the knowledge necessary for that job. And the candidates, well, they try to gain that knowledge by going to university, by 
getting the certificates, this and that. But then when they get higher, time and again, we see that many of these people are too afraid to share their opinion. They're too afraid to voice their knowledge. And if, it's the, uh, if, it, if the knowledge is hidden, what's the use of that? Well, how can we turn this silence into dynamic collaboration? My name is Poe, and this is my research. Thank you. Thanks, Bo. Aline, you're on. Rick and Mary, two athletes from different backgrounds. They both face the same stressors, yet Rick burst before Mary. Why? Because our ethnicity, age, and gender influence how we handle stress and experience burnout. But mindfulness offers a way to relieve stress and reduce burnout. My research starts with an experiment on sports professionals, but my findings will help people help themselves with customized practices. Thank you. And after Aline, we have Massa. Here comes Massa. Why is it that the fashion wars decide who, uh, who can get more choices and who doesn't? And how do those who have limited choices and who cannot? My study is about figuring out the roles that, behind, that leave plus size fashion behind. Let's talk about making every size count on the clothing rack. Thank you. Thank you. Our next presenter is Lisa. Hi, my name is Lisa Di Paolo. Did you know that 79% of organizations harness the power of artificial intelligence for recruiting new employees? But only 4% use AI for promoting current employees. Why the hesitation? Well, my research explores professionals' perceptions of using AI for promotion decisions. And my interviews reveal a strong preference for using for a collaboration between human intelligence and artificial intelligence. Want to know more? Visit my poster. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Tommy, you're next. Hello. Imagine a future where every street corner can turn into a hub of entrepreneurship and every byte of data turns into a catalyst for change. And so today we delve into smart cities, the urban landscape thriving on open innovation and responsible data sharing. And so by looking at public-private partnerships and the way in which they leverage the vast yet underutilized data, we're uncovering new models that promise economic growth, um, resilient, um, equitable, and human-centered cities. Thank you. Kapil. Hello, everyone. So unless you have been living under a rock, you have probably used ChatGPT. But in case you are living under a rock, well, don't worry, because ChatGPT probably knows all about it anyways. So here, uh, we, uh, people have been using this evolutionary AI tool at work for a lot of things to maximize productivity, to maximize efficiency. But do students use it the same way? Students have other goals. They're looking for learning and developing skills. So meet my friend John. He and I will take you on a tour to understand what happens in a student's head while using AI. So he has a tight deadline for an upcoming assignment. So make sure to drop in and to check out this poster to help him out. Thank you so much. Uh, Bushan, you are next. Thank you. Imagine a busy restaurant where understaffed servers fail to provide excellent service. Dissatisfied customers leave a tip just because it's an obligation, but they leave a small amount of tip. This impacts the server's earnings because of the tipping policy. In such situation, tipping norms impact both customers and servers. My research explores how these norms impact the relationship between them. I found that imposed service conditions contribute to the tensions between the customers and servers, ultimately leading to diminished service relations. My research in academia stands out due to its uh, inclu inclusion of customers as well as uh, servers' perspective and contributes to servers' tensions as well as industry tensions. Uh, 
I'm sorry, industry tensions. Uh, I'm sorry, that's it. Sorry. Thanks, Bhushan. Johnny is very keen to join us. Come on out, Johnny. We're out of truck drivers, believe it or not. That's not a joke. That's a reality that my study deals with. Under the framework of job demand and resource model, I, I interviewed 14 drivers from three different underrepresented groups. Based on my interview data, I had recommendations for the government agencies, for the industrial leaders, and for general public like you. And before you go to my booth, I can tell you one recommendation is for all of you who have a driver's license, be nice to the drivers on the road. Thank you. Thanks, Johnny. Joey, you're next. Hello, everyone. Should I? Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Joe LeDuc. Uh, my research aims at uncovering the causes of burnout to reduce its prevalence in organizations. In a sample of 600 employees in the US, Canada, and the UK, I uncovered the key uh, role of uncertainty and work meaninglessness in the generation of burnout. I invite you to come visit my poster to discuss the practical implications of these findings for your work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lin Yang, you're next. Hi, everyone. My name is Lin Ying. Uh, we are facing different ads online every day from TikTok, YouTube, Instagram. So I'm interested in how negative ad appeals, such as fear and sadness, impact on consumers' intention to share the ads. So the, review, the findings reveal that the arousing level of sadness is not always low, and that the intense negative ads encourage sharing, especially when the viewers are deeply immersed in the ads narrative. So check out my poster for detailed ins insights. Thank you. And finally, we have Karishma. Good evening, everybody. Picture a world where students were effortlessly able to balance their academic pursuits as well as their professional responsibilities. In a dynamic landscape like Canada, it's an equally challenging journey for both local and international students. My research delves into focusing on how these students navigate through the dual demands of both work and study. By, uh, by, uh, by conducting a diverse sample, uh, we focus on uncovering various challenges like time, uh, time management skills and also immigration hurdles. Join me in focusing on these challenges and complexities to make way for potential policies that could ensure a wholesome student success. Thank you, everyone. OK, so my role now is to thank all the students for giving you those little nuggets of their research that I hope will entice you to go and see the full research on their research posters. Um, because we have so many students, we have divided up the display of the posters into three groups, three sessions. So session one, you will see the first nine students, session two, the next eight, the session three, the final eight, in the order that they came out today. Um, they will be announced by our very, very uh, sort of knowledgeable <laughs> fourth space staff. They will let you know when each session starts and stops. Um, I would like you to be sure that you chat with students, you ask them their questions, etc. We have a number of judges who are here who will be walking around doing exactly the same thing evaluating the posters and the conversations that they have with the students. Um, you all get to vote. Mm -hmm. So at the front desk where you came in, there will be some ballots. You get a ballot, one ballot please, just one. <laughs> and we will ask you to circle the poster that was your favorite poster and drop it in the ballot box at the front. There is a most popular poster prize that is um, being, there's a competition for that. So I do invite you now to um, go look at the posters, have a good time, 
chat with the students, chat with each other. I know that here we have some potential students, people who will be starting the program in September. We do have some people who are alumni who've come back to see this session. And for all of you, alumni, current students, past students, prospective students, family members, co-workers, everybody who is online watching this, I thank you for having come and I wish you a good afternoon. Okay, thank you everyone for coming into the space today for this conversation. Thank you, Linda. Everyone online, <clears throat> thank you for joining us there. We're gonna be closing up the Zoom and the live stream now, but just a quick reminder that this uh, series of presentations, amazing presentations, by the way, are available on our YouTube channel if you'd like to revisit or share it there. Uh, don't forget to join us again for another event here at Fort Space, and have a great afternoon. Everyone else in the space, stick around. There's some amazing posters coming up. Thank you.